Hi, this is Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextral Gunfighter. This is a follow-up to my uh, mountain biking hiking review of the Kel-Tec SU-16C, uh, as I call it, the backpack rifle or the concealed carry carbine. Now, in that uh, first uh, review, I kind of uh, gave a lot of advice on, you know, how to outfit your SU-16. And so now I'm kind of thought, well, maybe I should freaking take my own advice. And so what I've done is I've progressed with tr attempting to achieve a more anti-snag, a lighter weight uh, version of the SU-16. So for starters, I've eliminated the flash hider. I've gone with a, uh, a thread protector that's kind of a, you know, kind of a fancy looking one. It's kind of semi-fluted. I'll have a link down in the description if someone else wants to do this. But it's a little, just a thread protector replacing the, the uh, flash hider. Now that reduces the overall length uh, considerably. And uh, in fact, um, just to give quick numbers on that, um, with this thread protector on there instead of the flash hiders now, uh, 35.5 inches long extended and 25.5 inches long folded. So it definitely makes it more of a messenger bag type rifle or as I call it a concealed carry carbine. Um, and so my thinking is is that the overall shorter overall length is beneficial. It does position it in my scabbard so it sits down lower and doesn't interfere with the back of my head if I'm climbing a steep hill and looking up. Whereas occasionally on my mountain bike would my helmet would tap the uh, top of the rifle in the scabbard with that setup. Now I also uh, have removed the Burris Fast Fire 2 that I had on here and um, because it did stick up quite a bit and that was uh, providing it although it's a very lightweight you know red dot optic um, it what it did stick up a bit and that created drag uh, when trying to draw it out of the rifle scabbard <clears throat> now I could have stuck with the, uh, the rear plastic sight that Caltech ships out with the rifle but I've gone with the tech sights and um, Okay, here is the uh, tech site. This is, this is the elevation model. And uh, first step to mounting this is to just remove this uh, pick, pick rail clamp screw, clamping screw here. And uh, just a little tiny dab of Loctite, blue Loctite. Whoa, that's a little too much, but that's yeah, okay. Okay, we've got our little dab of Loctite on there. And you see this uh, clamping plate, since that's going to fall off, that goes in there just like that. Insert the screw. Thread it up just a little bit, just enough to hold the screw in place. Now we can uh, position it on the pick rail. Snug that up just a little bit. Okay, so we've got her hair it's on there, but still loose. So what I'm gonna do is shove it forward, just like you would a scope. So if under recoil, it doesn't uh, doesn't shift, you know, because you could put potentially slide, get a little bit of slack in in the pick rail. So we shove it forward, so it's up against the one of those cross pieces. And now we're going to tighten it down. And as we tighten it, we're going to kind of wiggle it back and forth as we shove it forward. And that'll kind of help position it. And so the theory goes, position it on this plastic, or polymer, sounds better, polymer picket, picatinny rail. And then just tighten it to where it's no longer wiggling around. Let me just get that screw where it's just flat. Don't want to over tighten a pick rail. And there we go. She's installed, ready to go. It's a very nice sight. I went with the one that's actually elevation adjustable. Now I know, of course, that I can adjust elevation at the front sight uh, with the this, you know, AR styled front sight. But uh, that provides it with what I call uh, kind of in the field come ups with the rear sight. I can actually make changes on the fly. Now the uh, cool thing is for me is that it's low snag and it also by bringing it down 
the sighting system down lower to the bore of the rifle, I was able to eliminate the comb that I had, uh, the elevated foam comb that I had on here before to get my cheek weld up for the optics. So that drops that all down lower, more compact, and a little bit less weight to save it like uh, totally about five ounces. Uh, not a huge savings, mainly I was looking at you know eliminating bulk. Uh, the one other thing I would like to see, uh, the charging handle is another drag item for drawing out of the scabbard. So if a, someone could come up with a folding charging handle for this, that would be pretty sweet. Be a bit of a challenge given that it is a reciprocating charging handle. And so to have it folding and yet retain the ability to do uh, forward assist, uh, yeah, a bit of a challenge there I suspect. Maybe a forward fold up or something. But anyway, what that accomplishes on as far as my backpack is I was able to go with a smaller uh, scabbard, backpack scabbard from Everly Stock. This is one I've had for a long time. And this one, unlike the other one, the other one was uh, kind of a rectangular on both ends. This one is tapered on one end and then rectangular on the other. And a little bit smaller, a little bit less weight, a little bit less bulk. So um, a little bit less space taking up. And so for backpacking, that means I've got room for other stuff. Now this is the uh, Mirko flash hider that I took off of. As you can see, it's about uh, beyond the, where the muzzle would be. It's a, almost two inches, maybe one and three quarter inches extended. Uh, that, that extends the length of the rifle. So uh, my, my estimation is that I'm not gonna notice any big fireballs of flash coming out of the front of the barrel. Um, and I think maybe this has some compensating functionalities and I don't expect to see any big change in recoil or muzzle jump when shooting this little rifle. And another thing, the advantage of running with the iron sights instead of the, uh, the red dot or, or, or scope is that, um, okay, while I've given up, taken a, a risk that I'm gonna have a greater flash signature, you know, so that uh, my opposition, whether it's human or animal, could see a flash, a muzzle flash, I, and so I'm increasing my ability to be seen there, but by eliminating the optic, I'm eliminating that little reflective glass and therefore reducing my flash signature due to the optic glass, you know, reflecting sunlight and then kind of exposing my position. So there's advantages one to the other. So the question comes down, which would you rather have? The red dot and the flash hider and the comb on here? or basically an extra 13 rounds of ammo because that's five ounces, I can carry an extra 13 rounds of ammo. Are you really that much more accurate with the red dot optic than you are with iron sights? Well, we'll find out. Um, you know, especially with a non-magnified red dot. I mean, it helps for someone old like me that whose eyes maybe are not gonna be, have such a clear picture on the front sight, but I think uh, it's gonna be good enough and certainly more compact. Now, another thing I've done is to run the uh, stock 10 round magazine in this, and that takes up, even though a 20 round mag does fit, it does stick out just a little bit when folded. And so I'm again, reducing the thickness of the rifle and helping to reduce the drag when it comes time to pull it out of the scabbard. Okay, so now our next step is to, we've got this thing mounted is to uh, zero our iron sights and I'm going to be using a Project Appleseed cider squares and uh, be shooting at uh, 25 meters. Now I started off before I even came out here to the range I, uh, I used one of my uh, training lasers and inserted that so it's kind of like bore sighting and I set up at 12.5 meters and using this target at 12.5 meters each one of these little quarter inch squares equals to two minute of angle whereas at 25 meters each quarter minute your quarter inch square equals uh, one minute of angle now as I understand from uh, tech sites uh, well it has adjustable for elevation and windage on the rear sight here uh, each click is equal to approximately uh, one minute of angle. It's actually seven eighths. So at a hundred yards, seven eighths inch, inch. And uh, so with a rounding error, we'll figure that at uh, 25 meters, uh, 
uh, it, we're just going to call it one minute of angle when we see it on the quarter inch square charts here and I think that's going to get us get us close enough now when I use the laser um, uh, it was up uh, say five minute of angle or, or five squares up and five squares right uh, when I shot the laser and um, and so to get it back down to where it was down to the left five five of these quarter inch squares and down five quarter inch squares that's a 10 minute of angle remember each quarter inch square is two minute of angle. So it was 10 minute angle down, 10 minute angle to the left. And so I could click those in and then be right on. Now actually, now I, I said that just for kind of illustration's sake, but actually when I put the laser in, uh, the it was pretty much pretty much right on. It was actually hitting right under, I'm shooting at the center black square and it was hitting right under there, which you would want to be a little bit low at, at, uh, at 12 and a half meters and for it to therefore be on at 25 meters. Now of course the plan was we're zeroing a, this is a 16 inch barrel 556 rifle, we're going to zero it at 25 meters and that should put us on again for our distant zero for at about 275, 280 yards. And so that gives us a battle site zero uh, for 275 yards. And then for intermediary, you know, uh, beyond 25 meters, and then before it goes down to out to that 275, about halfway out there, you're going to have to hold under about five inches. And, and, and then approximate hold unders between, say, uh, 75 you know yards you have to hold under a little bit maybe an inch and and so on i mean you really need to test this beyond that but we're going to just zero today at 25 meters now the only thing i'd say about the two sites they kind of mimic in some ways the uh the m1 grand's rear sight you know it is a peep sight so it puts it right close to your eye that's one advantage it gets you a little bit tiny a little bit more um uh, sighting radius but uh, I do wish they had the kind of like the barrel adjustments like on the uh, M1 Grand that would be really sweet so that you could you know easily click in now Tech Sites has provided me with the tool this is the tool that in order to make the adjustments uh, that one uh, is what you use to, uh, to adjust the elevation and then these little prongs there are what you use to adjust the windage and I like to figure out a way to maybe have this like attached to the rifle somewhere some hidey spot or something on it but that'd be cool now the uh, kind of the purpose of achieving you know for backpacking or mountain biking to carry uh, a concealed carry carbine you want a lightweight and small compact package now what that allows is not i mean one you can carry a rifle with you but it also allows you to carry some of the other survival gear you might need now there's a terrific article uh it's by uh, badlands fieldcraft and i'll include a link down in the description where they talk about the 10 c's of survivability and so what we're trying to do is carry a rifle plus these 10 c's of survivability and uh, just to run through them real quick but check out the article it's really good but one is number one is combustion and the 10 c's you know using the letter c now combustion devices now that would be like a lighter or a fire striker uh, cutting tools or a knife cordage you know some uh, paracord uh, cover elements that could be uh, clothing and uh, like a shelter cover a container a container that you can boil water in a canvas sail needle for sewing or maybe even stitching up your flesh uh, a candling device kind of stretching the sea thing here but that what they meant is uh, like a flashlight or uh, something for lighting a headlamp for example uh, cotton material um, and for like filtering water or for wrapping up or banding yourself and cargo tape so like gorilla tape or or duct tape so a small amount of that so going light with your rifle or your self-defense system uh, means you can carry these other things in fact these other things are probably going to be more useful more likely to save your life than your rifle but um, anyway keeping the weight down keeping the bulk down allows you to carry these items so now let's go to zeroing the rifle okay here we go to uh, zero first I'm going to shoot for the uh, center square on our apple seed uh, siding squares target and uh, see where I'm at I'm going to shoot right-handed once I've verified that we're you know pretty much zeroed then I'll shoot left and right-handed 
to make sure that uh, I'm shooting the same both 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 uh, left and right handed. Got my uh, my really sweet elbow pads on here. Okay, let's go, we'll go take a look. See where we're at on the paper. And it looks like I'm running a little bit high. We call that the group right here. So I'm um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine squares high. And then looks like uh, say one, two, two squares to the right. So nine squares high means I need to come down uh, at uh, nine. These are nine quarter inch squares at 25 meters. So they're, it's one minute of angle each. So I got to come down nine minute of angle and over two minute of angle. So let's go make the adjustment. So we need to bring this down nine minute of angle. Let's see. Okay, I'm, we'll try that. I'm not sure how many turns I got on it. I couldn't quite tell. Don't have a lot of feel through this tool. Okay, well I can get the two minute of angle left easy enough. It's right here. It's counterclockwise. Let's see. There. So let's uh, fire again and we'll start over with this. You can see here's the uh, my second string of shots. And again, we're still to the right. So I call that the center of the group. We come over one, two, three. So four minute of angle. Must have measured wrong up here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, should have been four minute of angle up there too. I don't know why I thought it was two. I guess I was measuring off of that one. But anyway, so here's the center of our group. One, two, three, four. That'll put us right in the middle. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that adjustment on the windage four minute of angle to the left and then we'll go for these uh, other targets here left and right hand. okay so here we're going to make the adjustment for to move it four minute of angle left and to move the sight left we rotate this counterclockwise there's a little retainer or a set pin right there that's spring-loaded and that's what one of these is going to press into to depress that while we rotate it really good uh, right on the edge of the black left uh, sloppy there I don't think I have my natural point of aim I'll do better um, I'm thinking that was a pretty good string so I'm gonna move it back a click to the right and we'll try again up here see if I can suck a little bit less so I'm gonna move this to the right uh, two minutes of angle and what I've decided is that this works best is if whichever direction you're going you put the pin that's gonna this pin that's depressing the spring to the pin there uh, and there and then rotate away from it and not into it so since I'm going to the right and put it in just like that and rotate away come back press it again one more click to get one more minute of angle or there we go okay so you know as far as like uh, the muzzle device you're running just the 
uh, thread protector on there instead of a flash hider. From my position as the shooter, I didn't notice any anything really different. Maybe a little bit of a flash, but it is broad daylight, so I'm probably not going to see it. So what we'll do now is I'm going to set my camera to uh, you know uh, kind of a high speed uh, imagery, so it can catch. Uh, it'll basically it's going to take more twice as many uh, images per second than it does this normal. Uh, video here, so uh, won't be any sound in that, but we can at least uh, we'll see what the uh, what the flash signature looks like. I think. Here's an Everly Stock Mini Me backpack. I've got the waist belt on. I've got my game bag out. And we're going to see if we can uh, notice that the rifle is sitting down deep within the scabbard now, deeper than before with the uh, old setup without the muzzle or uh, the flash hider on it. So uh, we'll see if it, uh, I can still pull it out. Uh, it is pretty snug because I'm using the smaller scabbard than I was before. It's more compact, but uh, I think I can maybe get it with one arm. I may have to use two to pull it out. 